forward and upward in from the cold and the snow to give you my first impressions of the Hoka Arahi 4. There it is as well behind me on the shelf. My first stability shoe of 2020. You know that I am more of a neutral running shoe kind of guy, but I will dabble every now and then for a shout out to all the stability runners out there that need some of that stability through their running shoes. Okay, quick side story before we dive into my first impressions, by the way, this is not my full review that'll happen after 50 miles. Um, I had surgery in college on my right foot to release my fascia tendon. I had plantar fasciitis for years in college. It was really bad and it just would not go away. So I had surgery and which is why in my, my opinion, my thesis as to why my right foot over pronates a little bit more than my left foot. If you watch the full reviews on this channel, uh, you've seen my right foot over pronate just a little bit more. So anyway, every now and then I do like to test out stability shoes because of that reason. Okay, today's run, 13 miles. All right, there it is on your screen in kilometers, 745 a mile, what I like to call my steezy pace. It was perfect pounding ground out there in the soft, fluffy snow. It was amazing. I, be, I think I saw one other person out there for 13 miles. So I love those kind of runs. And also the last, it's crazy, but the last stability shoe that I tested, it was about, crazy enough. It was about a year ago. It was the Brooks Ravenna 9. What I, I actually ended up returning it because it was a little overstabilized, meaning it was not, um, it was not loose. Actually, here we go. The twist test. It was not loosey goosey enough to, uh, through that twist test for me. I like a little bit of mobility uh, through that midsole, even if it is a stability running shoe. Okay, let's dive into it. We're looking at a drop of five millimeters. Okay, 32 millimeter stack height in the heel, uh, 27 in the forefoot for that five millimeter drop. For that weight, we're looking at 9.6 ounces in men's size nine or eight ounces in women's size eight. So pretty lightweight for a stability shoe. Usually stability shoes are a little heavier because they have to have uh, added um, guidance uh, through that midsole, uh, what a lot of uh, running shoe companies call guide rails. You've probably heard, you maybe have heard that term before. It's basically, well, it's a lot of, um, it's, a, it's a piece of plastic that can run along the side of the midsole right through this area on both sides just to add that stability or what are what's also called uh, roll bars so that you're not over pronating or supinating too much through your gait cycle. For the upper on the Rahi 4, it's leaner than the three last year's iteration. And in my opinion, it's a classic Hoka upper. It feels like a Hoka upper. It looks like a Hoka upper. It's an engineered mesh. Uh, pretty breathable, I must say, on today's run. It felt breathable, especially through the toe box. Uh, I felt the air coming in. Uh, my toes, they didn't get too cold out there, uh, but it definitely was very uh, breathable through the engineered mesh. Uh, the tongue is not gusseted, just so you know. It's not gusseted to the uh, outer wall of the upper. And the heel counter, nothing, uh, nothing to write home about. Again, pretty lean through that heel counter. Uh, what was I going to say? It, um, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Not plush. That's a good way to put it. The upper is not plush at all. So if you like a little more extra cushion through your upper, this might not be the shoe for you. Okay. Moving on to the midsole and the outsole of the Rahi 4. Pretty cool stuff going on here. I'm going to, I'm going to combine them together because they're working as one. So do you see the J shape out here on the outsole? So this orange EVA foam is firmer than the white foam, okay? And the, that um, firmer foam creates the stability for this shoe, all right? So notice notice that they, on the medial side, so the inside of the shoe, the, EV, uh, the firmer orange foam wraps around, wraps around the heel, but then it stops on the lateral, about halfway down the lateral side of this midsole. And that is what creates uh, it, it, that is what prevents you from over pronating through your foot strike. I think it's kind of neat. Um, I haven't seen, so it's different than a lot of other stability shoes that have guide rails or roll bars uh, through their midsoles. Uh, Hoka has this, what they call their J-frame uh, stability. So I think, it's, I think it's interesting. And I must say, uh, the first two miles of today's run, I definitely noticed uh, the stability. It felt, I, I felt it a lot in the heel, right here on the inside, the medial side of my heel. 
But then after about two miles of running today, it went away. I forgot about it. And I was like, okay, it's opening up a little bit. Um, I didn't feel like it was over stabilized, if that makes sense. That's one of the reasons that I don't really enjoy stability shoes is because I feel like the stability is, um, it's, it's telling my foot where to strike rather than me telling my foot where to strike. And I, I like to be a little more in control of my foot strike, if that makes sense. So anyway, they, it's the J-frame stability that runs through the midsole and the outsole here. I think it's a, I don't know, so far so good. I like, I like what Hoka is doing with that J-frame uh, technology. One last note on the outsole. So there is exposed EVA foam, but it's hard to tell because it's all white, but there is also zonal, okay, zonal rubber, uh, right where my finger is at right now, there's pods of rubber to help protect and basically increase the durability of the outsole uh, of the Arahi 4. For fit, I went true to size, no issues there, no slipping through the heel. Uh, if you need a little wider toe box, you might not, you might want to look at a different uh, lineup of stability shoes like a Brooks lineup. Um, I, you know, Hoka is known to be a little more narrow, especially through that toe box. I didn't notice it for me, but just keep that in mind if you need a wider uh, toe box. On the comfort scale for the Arahi 4, we're going to go medium, all right, medium. It's not plush through the upper, and with the stability built into, into the midsole, it's definitely a little more of a firm landing, okay? Just keep that in mind. My positive for the Arahi 4, it's got to be that J-frame. It does not feel overstabilized. For a drawback, I don't really have one at this point, so that's a good sign. We shall see after 50 miles. Now, when I talk about durability in my full reviews and my first impressions, it's always a prediction or a thesis because I can never take the shoes all the way to 400 miles, 500 miles, because there's just too many shoes to test out there. But my prediction for this shoe is that 400 to 500 mile range, okay? That's my prediction based off of my first run. We shall see after 50 miles how the upper, how the outsole, and how the midsole is holding up. And how will I use this shoe moving forward? Crazy enough, I think it's gonna fall into more of the middle distance to long run category, meaning 15 to 22 miles. I, it's, it's, it's got potential to be like a tempo shoe, but I think the midsole is just a little too much uh, for me to be, a, to be a tempo shoe. So I think it's gonna fall again into that long run category. Now, is it worth the $130 price tag? I think they nailed it, all right? Maybe, man, if it was 120, they definitely would have nailed it. But 130 is not bad for a stability shoe. Um, considering, I think, again, that midsole, I think you're going to get about that 400 to 500 mile range out of the Arahi 4. And on to that question of the day. You better believe it. It is time for the stability runners out there to shine down in the comments. Here we go. What is your go-to stability shoe right now and why? This is going to be a great education for me as well because I'm just, it's like stability shoes are just a little foreign to me. I just don't get it. I don't get a chance to run in them as much as neutral shoes. So I can't wait to read your comments. Let us know what you're running in right now and why. And there you have it. First impressions of the Arahi 4. I'll get you that full review after 50 miles. I think there's a good chance we're going to get to 50 miles in this shoe. Uh, how long it takes, I don't know, but um, as my volume, as you know, I'm marathon training right now, and so my volume is climbing pretty good. You know, next week I'll be in that 80 to 90 mile range. So I have a good feeling we'll get to 50 miles in this shoe sooner rather than later. All right, that is the vlog for today. I know it's a little shorter, but we're gonna keep, we're gonna cut it there and uh, onward and upward. All right, all right, everyone, we're gonna toss it back to my full review on the right of the Hoka Carbon X. That'll be on the right. And then on the left, I'll find another Hoka shoe. You know what? We'll toss it back to the Hoka Carbon Rocket uh, full review. That'll be on the left. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. As always, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.